thank you for uh, first of all for inviting me and for uh, this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, myself. So I am uh, Francis Strobe. I'm a marine data expert at uh, Seascape Belgium. And also I'm uh, working at the IMATNET Secretariat as a data and communication officer. Um, so at uh, Seascape Belgium, I'm mainly uh, working around uh, communication, which means that I'm focusing on uh, the website where I am uh, yeah, providing all the information that we want to uh, promote, let's say, or to talk about to our website. And that involves, of course, not only uh, publishing content, but also on the, let's say in the back end to uh, construct the pages and look at uh, what ways we can offer on, uh, on just for users to find uh, data and data products on the eMotNet central portal website. Besides that, I'm also involved in uh, specifically the data and the data products that our thematic groups are offering, which means that I'm interacting with the uh, coordinators of these thematic groups to see when uh, a product is released or data sets are being uh, published, that we just provide uh, best circumstances uh, for these to, to be published and to be uh, promoted and released. having uh, a background in, in sciences, more general, and then at the end uh, specifically focused on uh, ecology and evolution. But uh, being a biologist, of course, there's the, the science aspect for sure. And then on, uh, let's say, technological uh, part uh, of, the, of the STEM, the STEM uh, profile, I'm uh, always interested in computers. So at that level, that um, first of all, just um, doing things by myself and later on also um, yeah, following extra courses and classes on that topic. I think I can, uh, at this point where the job I'm doing is, uh, yeah, is, a, is a good combination of, uh, of those two. So um, yeah, at that point, that's uh, where I see it uh, yeah, in parallel with those STEM profiles. That's uh, an interesting question because first, yeah, I wanted to become a biologist and I, I thought that would be really cool. And it's also a very direct path in, in, in education. You, know, you can go to university and you can study biology. And eventually I, I did a PhD in evolution and ecology. But at the same time, I was always very interested in uh, computers and, in, in, let's say, websites and web development. So that's something that I started also from a very early age. But uh, at, at my point where I was doing my PhD, I then started to, to look more into that, uh, did web development, and you know, started to learn more and more on databases and data management and the things you can do with those things. And actually with the a, with a first job I had, um, I had to develop, well, I had the opportunity to develop um, a, a web, uh, website around uh, Belgian species which means that I had the opportunity to combine, let's say, my biology background with my IT skills that I was learning day by day, but also then in the job itself. And uh, from there on, it actually took flight and I, yeah, I didn't turn back to, let's say, being a pure scientist, but much more, as you said, uh, working in data, data management, but also uh, creating uh, web applications around that. And then, yeah, then the ball got rolling and that's where I'm still in uh, at this point. some point um, very important is I guess you have to be a team player so uh, yeah and that's that's one of the things I like the most um, in the in the group of people uh, if it's professional or even just with friends yeah I like to have a good team around me that I can rely on and that can also rely on me um, so that's let's say for for personal skills and also if I'm asked something, I will always say it's possible. So I have this, this can do attitude, let's say. Um, and on, on the other hand, sometimes, yeah, I get a, a special request or uh, something is asked that I have to look for a, a creative or an inventive way of, of solving things because you can do as much as you want, but not, al not always everything is possible um, just in the time that you have available or just with uh, the resources that are there. 
So you need to have uh, some creativity and then um, you also have to have uh, yeah possibility to adapt where possible because um, yeah you need to be a bit versatile and um, in the end yeah if things have to work you have to be very accurate as well so yeah that's something where you where you have to take care of uh, just you need to be somebody who wants to go to the very end to to make things work um, but then on professional skills let's say um, yeah I'd, I'd always like to to present things in a very nice way so visualization of things even if it's a uh, a PowerPoint presentation. It's important for me that things look nice, that, that they that they have uh, yeah they have a good flow. And um, then more on technical skills. Let's say uh, yeah database administration, software engineering, uh, software management. Uh, yeah, having a, a good interest in, in, in web architecture, uh, web development, and also just that extra bit if you can look at uh, you know the front end so what people eventually will see from what you're uh, developing yeah just to have a good user uh, experience and just to think a bit on on that as well is important uh, in terms of let's say yeah, professional skills on well, maybe a, a long-term challenge is, is of course the the ever evolving web landscape, you know, and then how to keep uh, up to date uh, or even try to be ahead of that or, or see new or novel ways of, of doing things by, by maybe a bit pioneering or at least following the latest trends. It's, it's yeah, that's evolving always so quickly that when you're working uh, for a project or in a company, you're always a bit stuck on, on what people are used to do and then of course what you see what's happening it always takes time to to get everybody on board and then uh, yeah again resources and and, and uh, capacity is also of course uh, important but then to go in in those new directions that's always a uh, yeah that's always a challenge and uh, let's say in day-to-day -day challenges it's more again on uh, the, yeah, the time that you have to, to solve things, to find a solution, uh, to, to develop a, a workflow of doing things. And maybe at this point, again, um, where many people may, might have referenced to that when you're working uh, remotely, uh, the way on how you connect with each other. Although I must say that, you know, uh, working with computers and in front of computers is also yeah, giving you lots of, of possibilities and, and things can also go really uh, efficient, uh, of course. My curriculum is quite uh, yeah, peculiar in a way that I don't know anybody else of, let's say, uh, students and friends that I, uh, yeah, that I studied with that uh, are following the same track. I know of a couple of people who did that and they, they end up in other jobs but uh, in other uh, yeah, public sectors and so on. But um, for my colleagues more specifically, I think they have um, yeah, different paths, different career paths, which on the one hand were already more from the start IT oriented. Um, and then on the other hand, some people are then just more uh, focusing on, on let's say the communication and 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 those uh, skills but they yeah they have this kind of let's say more separate skill sets while yeah for me specifically if i just look around me um yeah and i think i think have this bit uh, unique profile where well yeah where it also comes in into the role description i have so it's it's both data and communication uh, that i'm uh, that i'm focusing on Well, a typical working day is actually a very typical day, a nine to five, where yeah, where my days just uh, start uh, as I'm teleworking now uh, at home. So I have set up a, a separate kind of home office that you can see here. And then, um, well, there might be some exceptions uh, when there are urgent tasks or specific needs that I have to follow up on that my day will, will, yeah, will take a bit longer. On the other hand, um, yeah, my, my days can be flexible. So in a way that, um, you know, if I would need to work on something more, 
uh, in the evening. I could uh, take some some time off at noon. Uh, and definitely in these times, um, even if if we would be in a in a post COVID period, um, it's always good to you know to do some exercise. And uh, yeah, I'm very fond of just going outside at noon and uh, just having some uh, yeah outside sports. So that's also a bit of a, the flexibility you have from uh, working from home and just also working behind a computer or with computers that that they are not always dependent on those typical nine to five hours, of course. There are specific tasks that we, we set up where, where we have, a, let's say, a weekly meeting to discuss what, we'll, what we will do this week. Um, that's more on an individual basis with a, a colleague. It's also um, focusing on, on the communication. Uh, and then there are yeah, other more uh, weekly meetings with the team that I have, uh, where we are just uh, discussing what we are all doing and, and how we can help each other or, or sometimes need each other's input. Um, then that's uh, one aspect that's not always daily, but more on a weekly basis. Those things uh, yeah, are, are, are in, in, in the calendar, let's say. And then also we have um, technical meetings, but those are more ad hoc. Uh, just as I was saying, if you're working from, from home, it's nowadays much easier to just uh, yeah, uh, call somebody and have a very quick chat on something uh, if, if that person is available. And then just to, yeah, to just continue your work. Uh, before that, maybe you were much more um, yeah, trying to organize a meeting and so on. But this is something that I see as a benefit from uh, working from home or this new way of working. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's nothing very, as much as I would say a routine uh, on a daily basis what I'm doing, but um, well, something else that's important or has been important for us is uh, we're now using uh, a project management tool, uh, which uh, are plenty of those uh, on, on the web. And that is helping us a lot. So if there would be something that I would do on a daily basis, it's looking at uh, tasks uh, that have been assigned to me or just assigning tasks uh, for other people or just for myself so I can keep track of that and other people as well. So that's been a uh, that's been very useful and that's maybe my, my most uh, daily routine, just looking at those tasks and, and the projects in our project management system. Looking at my, my CV and, and just the, the path that I took, I, I've been already working uh, in the academic uh, sector. Then I've also been working in the public sector and well if i think i would uh, be able to work in, in other sectors like uh, ngos or startups i think i would have the, the proper skill set um, and also the background just the experience of uh, of working in these other sectors for for instance like a startup or ngos uh, i think i would be useful to work there as well and um, yeah i think as long as there are, as it, as it ties in with science, technology, and innovation, it's whatever sector. I think I would be, yeah, be a, be a, have a suitable uh, profile. So uh, I'm quite flexible in that way with with uh, with my background and my experience. Never lose your curiosity if you're interested in something and you want to dig deeper. Just yeah, just do it and then see. Where it where it will will take you, and yeah, I'm, I'm I've been always been interested in in looking at how you can let's say bridge gaps because uh, on the one hand you know the background in in science where people work with data but they do it on a very limited basis on their computer and and they're not let's say sharing the data and so on where where, where at at uh, my current job I'm really focusing on um, so I can I can see a bit that there was this this gap between uh talking about open data and and just all these technologies around that with uh with all these yeah, new new tools and new developments that are there even to a level of, of mobile uh, applications that are being developed so you want to just kind of bridge that gap if you see sectors that that are indeed there 
uh, bridging those gaps, those those would be the sectors that I would be interested in, because those will be yeah future uh, future possibilities for future jobs, and yeah then maybe just to say if if I can give uh, an advice on uh, yeah on teachers and parents, I think it's always good if you if you identify people that are interested in in those uh, in STEM and STEAM related topics, just to encourage them to to pursue those uh, yeah. Those interests, because uh, at, at least that's that's always what I did, and uh, yeah, and I'm happy about it uh, up to this uh, point.